Hey, Christy. Hey, Edith. What is green and goes to summer camp? What? A Brussels scout. Oh, a Brussels <laughs> scout. I see what you did there. <laughs> hey, Christy. Hey, Edith. What is the strongest vegetable? What? A mussel sprout. <laughs> <laughs> mussel sprout. You see? The same thing. Yes, twice. just like Brussels sprout. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners in Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening is becoming very popular. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. My friend Edith. Wait, Christy, hi. Hi, my friend, my neighbor, my podcast. Fellow, fellow gardener and podcaster. Yes, hi. Yeah, hi. And hi, everybody out there. We're excited to be here to share our gardens with you and to celebrate our failures and our successes. We have to thank them right now, Christy, because we love them. Well, it's really exciting to hear how many people are, have joined us on this journey. We now are in 25 states. Wow. And seven countries. No. So hello to our listeners in Mexico and Canada and the UK, the Philippines, Latvia, and Ireland. We are so exotic. <laughs> <laughs> and a special welcome to those who are in the garden right now watering or doing all the wonderful things that you do in your garden. I listen to podcasts when I garden. You do? Yeah. That's very nice. I want to do chores. Sure, absolutely. And uh, this week we're going to have a chat about bugs. So consider this your trigger warning. Also, we have some letters from the mailbag. You know, we love our mailbag. But first, hey Edith, how's hey. your garden? Well, um, it was a very, very busy week in the garden this week. First of all, uh, I, I had a garden mishap. Oh, I did, yeah. So, you know, I've been trying to stake my zucchini. Uh-huh. So I put a ladder over it, and I got all these strings and stuff ready to go to stake it. And it, I don't think it wants to go. So I was over there looking at it, and I leaned a shovel on the ladder, bent down to look for zucchini. The shovel came down, smacked me right on my ear. Oh, no. Christy? I, maybe I'm a little paranoid, but I think the zucchini did it as a matter of revenge. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, get me out of this ladder or it, something. The zucchini has become self-aware. You know, plants are more self-aware than we think. Yes. Right? I wonder if we could look at that in real slow motion. I wish. And we could we, just see one of those big old leaves sneaking yes. out. Knocking over that shovel. Oh, are you yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it really, I mean, it really hurt. It was one of those things where you know it's going to hurt for approximately 90 minutes real bad. So you wait it out and you get over it. So that's what I did. This is similar to when we talked about stepping on rakes. It is. Garden mishaps. Yeah. yeah good exactly. thing there was not a video camera out there. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Or maybe there should have been because then we could have caught the zucchini. That's right. And, wa and caught him in the act. And cuffed him. Cuffed him and taken him downtown. <laughs> You know what else I did? Huh. Um, I had these seeds, these kale seeds from, I think it was 2002. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to throw these away. And then I thought, why would I throw them away? I should throw them away into the ground. <laughs> so that's what I did. It's called sowing. Yes, it's called <laughs> sowing by more educated people. So I did that. Christy, they came up. Nice. They ate well until I killed them. Uh, it was really nice, but then I kind of, you know, hot, hot, hot July, little tiny baby kale. I didn't water them enough, and one day uh, they just weren't there anymore. Your garden is violent this week. It is. It's trying to teach me a lesson. Take your garden's trying hand. to kill you, and it's, you're trying to kill your garden. Yeah. We're battling. It was hot, it out. though. You know, you yeah, got to. pretty terrible. Yeah. Mm hmm. I have, I learned something huge this week, and I want you to share it with me. I brought something for you. Remember how you said that you never tasted purslane? Correct. I brought you some to eat. Oh. We're each going to eat some. Oh, nice. 
Do you know what else? Okay, we'll eat this first, and then I'll bring you. I'll give you my second surprise. Folks know that this is a. Some people call this a weed, purslane, mm-hmm. but it grows wild. We talked and, about this, I think, in one of the weeks, in, mm-hmm. in just last week's episode oh, about mm-hmm. um, noxious weeds and invasive right, plants. Right. And um, but people eat it. It's a superfood. Superfood. Yes. You ready? Yeah. On the I'm count ready. of three, we're okay. each going to okay. eat. Ready? ready. One, uh-huh. two, three. Eat. Oh my gosh, it's delicious. It's delicious. It's crunchy. It's, it's mucil- sweet. A little mucilaginous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's sweet. And 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 it has a little tangy taste to it too. Okay. I thought it was gonna be slimy. It's good. You're gonna like this next thing I brought. Because I was so tastes like, tastes like um like a green bean. Oh my gosh, it does taste like tastes like a green bean. Well now you you know now when you when you pull it out, if you do, now you can eat it. Do you know what else you can eat, Christy? Huh. Radish seed pods. So this is when the radish goes to seed. Uh huh. Uh huh. And there's a little pod, and it makes a pod. Yes. And it I flowers read about it. It flowers, attracting the bees, and then it creates this pod. Supposedly, you can eat it raw. And I, I say supposedly. I ate it yesterday to be your taste tester, and I'm still alive. <laughs> so it's all you look good. good. Thank you very much. It's the pod. Um, you can saute them. Oh, they look cute. Listen, I had one yesterday. I love them. Try it. Okay. It's chewy. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it tastes like a radish. It tastes like a radish. It's got that wonderful radish taste that I love yeah. so much. That's well, how really cool good. Is that? Okay, a little stringy. Mine was a little stringy. It was good. It was a little but chewy. Inside, pretty good. I love that. If you're starving, go into your neighbor's garden and eat his uh, unwanteds. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more thing, which is a garden hack I read about. Uh-huh. This is so cool. Uh, th- I read this on Wheat Witch Gardeners. This lady puts red stones in her strawberries. So the birds think that they're strawberries. They come down, peck at it. It's really hard. hurts their little beaks. And they fly That's away. That's ingenious. That's ingenious. Thank you, Wheat Witch Gardeners. Boy, we have to be careful, though, that the woman who trains her little kid to eat strawberries from last week doesn't mm-hmm. know about that. That is a very good point. Yeah, you're right. That's a really good idea. Isn't that a good idea? She said it works. Wow, yeah. I love that. Uh-huh. Has she, and she's seen him do it. Yeah, she said the crows are gone. You know, those big crows <gasps> yes. that come around and eat everything. She oh, goes, that's no more so crows. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. You had a busy time in your garden. I had a very busy time in my garden. And what about you? Well, I had a good week in the garden. I'm at this point now where it's July and it's hard to move around the garden. You know, mm-hmm. everything, I just feel like I'm having to be some sort of gymnast, gymnast kind of going in and around. Everything has grown so everything much. Everything has grown so much mm-hmm. and trying to get in and around. And um, so it's been, it's been aerobic in mm-hmm. the garden. Mm-hmm. Um, I did do a lot of deadheading, referring back to last week about invasive plants. Uh-huh. Morning glories came were all over my vegetable garden. So I had to pull all those up. Um, my mystery plant yeah, that I talked it about, doing? it's huge. It is definitely a squash. Mm-hmm. It is, it is, um, but I just don't know what kind. It's blooming. Okay. So I guess we'll find out. Is it a butternut? Is it an acorn? Uh-huh. Is it a spaghetti? Oh. Or is it Oh my gosh, weird... I have to tell you something. You made me remind me of it when you said spaghetti squash. So I have this, I had this big spaghetti squash uh-huh. and, and a couple of years ago, I noticed it was getting almost too big. So I put it and I, up on my chain link fence. Now, four inches away from my chain link is my neighbor's wooden. Well, I didn't, I did that. I, I, you know, tied it up and I didn't really pay attention to it. And one day I saw that the, 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 the spaghetti squash were between the chain link and the wood. And I couldn't get them out. And I had four spaghetti squash that were shaped like, like thick <laughs> badminton rackets. I <laughs> couldn't get them oh, out so no. so of course the squirrels had a field day oh. and then the birds came and then for the rest of the time i watched it rot oh, like that's like sad. mocking me yeah for my mistake like it was trapped uh-huh so i saw that happening again and i pulled all the little guys oh, through the chain good link. every day i checked that thing well uh, my spaghetti squash in my garden came from you 
Oh, that's right. How's it doing? Great. And this is the first time I've grown spaghetti squash. Usually really? I'm a butternut gal. Uh-huh. And, or, and zucchini and they're summer totally squash. They're different, though. Chrissy, they're uh, totally different. But I love different. spaghetti squash because mm-hmm. it's actually a great substitute for noodles. Yeah, for spaghetti. Hence the word spaghetti squash. <laughs> you have to, it's, best, it's good if you roast it. But if you want to put a nice meat sauce and you don't want carbonation on it. Uh-huh. Um, and then I also want to say that uh, I have an update on Alice. Okay, Alice, the sickly tomato plant. Yeah, so if you recall, I named her Alice because I do square foot gardening. And if you look at it in the terms of the Brady Bunch, this is the right. my, of my nine tomatoes. This is the one in the middle. And Alice is alive. She is. She is. She, you know, she doesn't look well, but I do see new parts growing. Do you see any little tomatoes? You should oh, be seeing Not that. only have I seen tomatoes, but I have harvested tomatoes off of Alice this week. Oh, wow. The sad part about it, this is a vintage red wine. Um, I wasn't crazy about the texture of it. The, huh. the the skin was a little thick. Yeah. You know how when you eat a slice of tomato, you don't really want to think about the skin of the you tomato? You sure that's because uh, she's not sickly or is it? I have it... no idea if, it was, if this is the kind of tomato, like this uh-huh. is more of a stew tomato. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not... I'm not quite entirely sure, but mm-hmm. but Alice is alive. But now I'm a little worried about Mr. Brady. Oh, um, what? Who is Mr. Brady? He is a a a a, a, a KC 149, uh, which is the same tomato that Campbell's soup makes their tomato soup out oh, of. Oh, okay. And I'm just getting a little leaf curl on it, and oh, I just think leaf curl is when it's too hot. But I'm watering every day. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll see what Mr. Brady does. We'll see. You know, he's the dad of the garden, so he, he should hang in. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been a good week in the garden. Oh, good. And, you know, people are asking us what our gardens look like. Oh, yeah? They're asking us on, uh, on Facebook, hey, we want to see what your gardens look like. So, folks, if you want to see pictures of our gardens or about these plants that we're talking about, just visit us on Facebook, on our Facebook page or our Pinterest page. Or you could also go to the website because there is a dictionary there, unlike any dictionary you've ever seen. So if you do not understand one of the words we're using, uh, we have made descriptions in our Upside Down Dictionary. It's really funny. Is it? Yeah, it's good. (laughs) Good. (laughs) Okay. Upside Down. talk about bugs oh yeah you know we we do not mind bugs i like bugs yeah yeah and we're not just talking you know volkswagens we're, t- we're talking <laughs> no what we are talking <laughs> if you have a garden or just flowers or whatever you're gonna have bugs you 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 we should have bugs. You should have bugs. First of all, who's going to pollinate? Are you going to get out there with a Q-tip going from blossom to blossom? That's a lot of work, Edith. A lot of work, and they're tiny. They're, you know, you run out of Q-tips. Uh, <laughs> plus, a gardener knows that he, it, it, a gar- a garden is to share, not just with the neighbors mm-hmm. or your family, right, Christy? It, you share with birds. It's you circle sh- of life. It's the circle of life. You at a microscopic level. Absolutely. So it's not about lions and zebras. Uh huh. It's about ladybugs and aphids. Yeah, exactly. And if you decide, no, I'm going to kill all of this, you're gonna, you're killing your soil as well. And mm. then when it rains, you're killing the neighbor's soil, and then mm-hmm. that goes into the rivers. And next thing you know, we have a big fat mess, and we don't want that. Yeah, I think that uh, there's something that society has created that makes us think that to have a bug means we're dirty. Yeah. And they're or we're unclean or we're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is Mother Nature's way. We need to let Mother Nature do her job. And maybe it's helpful to reframe it and think about that um, we don't want to um, eradicate. No. We just want to manage. Yeah. We, don't, we just want to reframe it so that we have more tolerance for all the living things that are in our yard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe the problem isn't so much the bugs. Maybe the problem is us and about what is being threatened is our enjoyment of the yard and the mm-hmm. garden. Mm-hmm. And what's wrong with a little chomping? A lot of little chewing. Yeah, a, a, little lot, a lot is one thing, but a little bit, a you got to give some up. You yeah, know? That's the big difference, right, between yeah. an infestation and a little mm-hmm. bug. Do you know that my dad used to, you know, when we had flies in the house, 
he never waited until they landed to kill them. He wanted to give them a decent chance. <laughs> so he would only hit them in the air when they were flying. When they were free. When they were Living free. their life. Yeah, yeah. So that they, you know what I mean? So that's kind of where I got my feeling of, you know, bugs are not that bad. They have a right to be here as well. That's beautiful. Right? I used to, when I was little, I never liked bugs. And I had to get, you have to get used to it. You have to get, feel comfortable being yes. out there yes. surrounded by bees. I mean, if you're in New York City, I mean, you don't like bugs because there's cockroaches. We're not talking about cockroaches. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about garden stuff, outside stuff. Or or head lice. We nobody likes head lice. <laughs> <laughs> we are not talking about head lice. This was we we gave you a trigger warning, people. If this is we all did. trying to make you yeah. a little itchy. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the only thing would be fun is that I think it like I have some of my favorite bugs, and I okay. think what would be fun is that if we both said out loud yeah. together at the same time to see what our favorite bug is, and to see if it's the same bug. Are you going to do a countdown? Yeah. On the count of three. Yeah. Or on three or the beat after three. <laughs> what, what, which one? The beat after three. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. One, two, three. Rolling Fireflies. Polies. Oh. Roly polies. Roly polies. Fireflies. We don't have any out here in Colorado. I love them. When I was a kid, we had them growing up in Minneapolis. And you could see them in southern Minnesota. And they don't, they're not out here in Colorado. Uh, folks would find fireflies in southern Minnesota and all the way down south and like Kansas and all the way east it's in that uh -huh. section of the United States and of course depending upon where you live you don't call them fireflies you'd call them lightning bugs right which is right. actually more accurate because a firefly is not a fly it is in the beetle family um so beautiful yeah so beautiful so uh it's so fun you know to do the cliche thing of catching them and putting them uh -huh. in a jar which sounds kind of cruel. But it isn't because you don't let them suffocate. That's right. You, gotta you put let them go. That's right. Let them go. Put little holes in them. Yes. They're actually endangered Are in they? the United States because of light pollution. They use the light. Oh, they do wow. the light to find their mate. And that's, wow. it's a mating ritual. Well, you, you know, so. you're like an entomologist. That is a bug person, right? Yeah, I, oh, good. Yeah. I think good. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, fireflies. <laughs> okay. I just loved them. That's and when cool. I was in, I was in Springfield, Missouri last summer directing a play, and the fire and when the fireflies came out, tears came to my eyes because I hadn't seen them since I was a kid. They were so beautiful. You know, I like roly polies for the exact opposite reason. Roly polies are these plain, dark <laughs> little bugs that when when you go and disturb them, they roll up into a pill oh, bless her little heart. they're so humble do you know mm -hmm. that they eat dirt and they poop out really good stuff for you they're they eat important dead mat. they're yeah. really important so don't kill roly polies roly polies are great what about ladybugs oh yes love ladybugs uh-huh they eat aphids like their mm -hmm. ice cream mm-hmm mm-hmm and they're pretty yeah um, my one of my favorite stories about ladybugs is um, I bought some. You know, you can buy ladybugs. Uh -huh, I bought uh -huh. some at Ectors, which is a great local um, nursery in our area, and I bought five thousand ladybugs. Wow! It, um, you keep them in your refrigerator. Yes, so that they a, kind of sleep. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you weren't gonna hurt them. So then, but you're supposed to let them out at night. Yeah. Um, so they don't go too far away. Don't go too far. Uh -huh. And you're supposed to water water the area so they have some water, and then. Um, uh, release them yeah so I was out in my yard and I had this it was evening and I had watered everything and I'm and just throwing the ladybugs out and they're just cold they're just all sleeping and they're just yeah. they, they just like throwing out raisins into your yard but raisins. eventually <laughs> they all started to wake up Edith yeah and what I didn't realize is that they were just coming out of the bag and I was covered in <gasps> hundreds oh. of ladybugs and, you know, ladybugs are cute, but any bug that is more than 10 is disturbing. Yeah, yeah, especially if, yeah, absolutely. Hundreds crawling everywhere. Wow. It was terrible. Do you, do you know what I didn't learn until last year? Wasps are really good for your garden, yes, too. Yes, they pollinate. I d Plus, they eat some things that you don't really want there. Yeah. I had no idea. So that's good. So don't don't be killing wasps. Pe people know about bees, but mm -hmm. I did not know about wasps. I didn't know earwigs were so beneficial. I don't know that they are. Are they? Yes. They really? eat aphids. 
Oh. Okay, here's another story I want to tell you that okay. this happened to me this week. Okay. Um, so I, I, last week I said I was I needed to harvest that cauliflower, and I did. Yeah. So I got over my fear of harvesting. I harvested my cauliflower, and I was going to blanch it, and I put it, I, you know, just soak the whole plant, Uh-oh. Hold the whole thing in water. Uh-huh. And I read this thing that also that if you put salt, soak it in salty water, it'll uh-huh. help any of the bugs come out. So I thought I'll throw some salt in there. And then all of a sudden... The cauliflower started to undulate. Oh no! Oh oh! And ooh. move. Mm. And about okay. In my mm. mind, it was about fifty earwigs came out, but maybe it was really only like ten. Oh, erupted from the cauliflower. Oh, the earwigs are gross. I you know I do think they I are, didn't even gross. know they were beneficial. I think they're so yeah. Gross. They are so good. They have those little pinchers, and those and they, they look like they're gonna fly, but they don't. Oh. Oh, man. P- I mean, people put out traps for them. I thought they were a bad they're, thing. They're, they're, they're good. Okay. Your well, are beneficial. Super good to know. Now, earthworms, of course, are something we adore. Yes. If you dig up a, a shovel full of, of dirt and there's a lot of earthworms in it, you have done a good job. Congratulate yourself, fellow gardener. Yeah, and if you get worms in your compost, that's like... The queen oh, of composting, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I had it a couple times, but I'm not very good at, I don't turn my compost pile enough to get. In the uh, in the springtime, when we're just coming out of winter, when I go out to my compost and look in it and turn something over, there are literally, literally hundreds of baby worms. Oh, They're nice. so tiny. Yeah, oh. it's the best. So then I, I take them and I put them, deposit them around the garden so that oh. it helps all the soil, you know, all over the place. Uh, I also like those hummingbird moths. Have you? Did you get those in your yard? I do. Those big things. Yeah, it's a moth. They, you know, that one of like them a hummingbird flew at me and hit me in the eye once. <laughs> so I'm really not a fan <laughs> at all. What were you doing? I was in my kitchen, and he flew in the window. Maybe he was headed for the light behind me, but he hit me right in the eye. Oh, you see, that's the thing about bugs too. Is that things that are, when they're really close up like that. Uh huh. That's gross. It, it was, yeah. That would be just that would cause you nightmares. A little bit of a trauma. To have a bug a in the bit. eye, bug in the eye, a yeah. big one like that too. Yeah, yeah, or a bug in the mouth. Okay, motorcycle time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, this has been great. I mean, we could go on and on about beneficial things. Do you have anything else on your list there? I that I, and, and bees, of course, and bees, of course, and I had written. A, Green lace wings. Oh, yes. Those pretty, pretty th- yeah. wings that look like lace, and they're green. That's how you recognize them. They're called green you know, lace wings. I like wings. it when a bug is described, is, the name is what it is. I do, too. Do you, you know, we, we didn't go over this before, but gardeners, I think, are so poetic. For example, the names of weeds in Colorado, listen to this. Prostrate knotweed. Hoary cress. <laughs> Yellow toad flax, jointed goat grass, nuts edge, hound's tongue. I mean, these sound like yeah. a psychedelic jug band, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> and now, opening for the wet, who is it? The, the, the toad on the wet sprocket. It is jointed goat grass. Woo-hoo! <laughs> Hello, Mother Nature here. Have you heard of pluots, plum cuts, blueberries, and blood limes? No, they're not infectious diseases. What about ugly fruit, broccoli flower, or lime quat? No one would blame you if you think these are sophisticated insults. You lime quat. But no, these are not insults. These are hybrid fruits and vegetables found in many a fancy produce section. Now here's a tip from Mother Nature. If you're standing in a produce section and feel stupid because you have no idea what anything is, maybe get out of there. Shop local. Go to a farmer's market close to you. Ah, there you are. At the farmer's market with simple and well-known fruits. How do you like them apples, fancy produce section? Brought to you by Shop Your Local Gardeners and Farmers. Okay, we're back, and now we're going to talk about bugs that maybe we don't like so much. 
You know, in Minnesota, what we would say? What? We would say, these are bugs that we're not a fan of. Of course you would. <laughs> you don't use the word don't like. You're just not a fan. You know, not a fan. No, not cheering for them. Nope. Not What's your first fan. one? What's your first one there that you're not cheering about? Uh, deer flies. Oh, deer flies. And I'm saying it because just this week, I got bit on my legs by deer flies. In your garden? Uh, sitting out on my pet, you know, in the backyard, on the back patio. Really? And they bit so hard that after, you know, they bite that big red welt that's on yes. your legs. And after that, there there was a bruise. Christy, you must have some tasty flesh. I have <laughs> never been beaten, been, been bitten. Shall we see? No. No. <laughs> eating weeds or <laughs> eating all eating sorts of things <laughs> well i can see why you're not a fan yeah My i just hate those goodness. anything you do about them or not do you have like a fly you know that people put out those gooey traps the fly paper that people flies oh those are so wings. disturbing oh they're disturbing to have the corpses of yeah. flies right next to yeah. your head all yeah. summer not a fan of deer flies <laughs> not a fan of the fly traps yeah mm, yeah Mm -hmm. Well, I am not a fan of something that moved east here, oh, I don't know, five, six years ago. We got Japanese beetles. I have seen three this summer. I got 30 just in the last 24 hours. How could we live so close to each other and it's, you have all these Japanese beetles? Because they like my grape leaves. Oh. That's where they go. They not only, they not only just eat them. They mate on them. And ladies and gentlemen, if you have bugs mating on a plant of yours, they're going to make that plant their shelter and their food. So you drop them in the soapy water. If it's mating on your plant, drop them in a bucket of soap. Oh, um, unless it's your neighbor's. Okay, if it's your neighbor's and they're mating on one of your plants, then you probably want to politely ask them to go home or get a room. <laughs> right. And t tell people why it has to be soapy water. Um, because then it's slick and they can't get out because, you know, they yeah. can fly. They can fly. They can so fly. So you want to drown them. And some they, people enjoy squishing them. Do you ever squish ugh, them? No. Ugh, some no. people get, some people find that, I think you get mm -hmm. to, people go, people go insane over Japanese beetles. They do. There's a way you can tip the leaf and they can fall right in, except the young ones, Christy, today, this actually happened. The little tiny ones, they hang on for dear life onto the leaf. I was like smacking the leaf against the outside of the bucket. Wow. And it wouldn't come. It was like like the Titan Games with a bug. Wow. You know, and the bug is winning. And you know, they're they're such a beautiful bug, though, they are aren't beautiful. they? They are beautiful. They're that copper and bright green. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't. They're they're noxious. Are they? Is that right? Would that be, they would be noxious. They don't belong. They don't here. belong here. They're from Japan. They first came over here in 1917, apparently on an iris plant in New Jersey. Wow. And they have no enemies except for maybe skunks and me and Edith. Mm -hmm. They live ten months of their life underground. Wow. And they come up for two months. So, this is what I did, just in preparation of next year, is that I bought. Milky spore. Tell me what milky spore is. It's a nematode that will. Um, nematode is a living organism. Attic. Yes. That you put in your lawn, and when the grubs, um, the, the, like the, the baby, baby grubs, beetles. when they yeah, yeah the beetles. Yeah. So after the beetles, a female can lay fifty eggs, and when the eggs hatch and they're the little grubs, they will eat. And then they will die. You have to get them at the grub stage. I and and I'm and I found a way to um, apply it, like a hack to apply it by using an old Christmas paper tube. So I will come into my yard and I uh -huh. will come and do your yard. They say the traps do not work because okay. all you're doing is attracting Japanese beetles to your yard. To your yard. Oh my! It's best to get them in the grub stage okay you're always gonna have a couple uh -huh. we're not we, that's okay right yeah sure we just don't want a thousand yeah because they will strip you bare they will everything. and they like hundreds of different types of plants i roses. just found out they love roses which you know i have a ton of roses uh -huh. and what's blooming so beautifully in my yard right now echinacea they're eating your echinacea yeah 
Somebody told me they dig, they burrow inside of the echinacea plant, Ooh. inside the head of it, and Ooh. that's where. It, and then they, that's, that's why I realized I had some echinacea plants that look like. What's wrong with you? You don't even bloom. You look like you died from the inside. Oh no! Japanese beetle. Well, so I saw three, but I think I have some that I'm not well, seeing. Well, every day I've been seeing a little more. So keep your eye on it. Japanese beetle. Or they're all staying at my house because of the grape leaves. I don't know. Yeah. Yuck. Now, if my husband was sitting here, yeah, huh? he would say the bug he hates the most are ants because they've been getting in the house and it drives him crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't. I guess I don't mind ants. Do they hurt anything in the garden? No, but they're just annoying in the house. Oh yeah, in the house, but sure they're fine. They're annoying. But I think anything in small amounts is fine. But just when you get a lot of something, yeah. Do you know what we? I had last year for the very first time a harlequin bug. Do you know what that no. is? No. First of all, they're beautiful. They are shaped, they're, um, what, what's the color of a harlequin? Right away. Black and white. And red. Yes. That's the color that they are. Oh. They're a beetle and it looks like they have a shield oh, on their back. Oh, I know back. exactly. Yes. yes. And if you look on the under, like they like cauliflower and cabbage. Yes. The crucifers. Yeah. If you look on the underside of the leaf, you will see their eggs. The eggs look exactly like little tiny kegs. White and black kegs or dice. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So you want to keep looking onto that and, you know, smear them off if you see them. With, you pick them off with your hand or spray or them spray with them. your hoser. Spray you don't hose. need yeah. to use uh, big chemicals. No. Sometimes the blast of a hose is just enough. Mm-hmm. I agree. Absolutely. And um, I think when you do see some bugs happening... You should be. You shouldn't go crazy and think you have to blast your entire yard. Mm-hmm. Just spot treat. Yeah, I also think that sometimes when, like, when you're in a farmer's market or something, and you see uh, something, a food that has a bug in it, you know that that wasn't treated. Mm-hmm. To me, that's a good sign. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Wash you it. Know? Just wash it. Yeah. Um, what about? I haven't seen any this year because it's been so dry. What about slugs? I see the remnants of little slugs you because do? I'll see them on my sidewalk. I'll see their little trails. Uh-huh. They love beans, green beans. Oh, I they will. Th- they will eat green beans down to the nub. There was this one summer; it was really wet, and we could not control the slugs. We put out plates of beer. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Cheap beer. Cheap, of course. Yeah. yeah. I won't <laughs> mention the brand, but you can imagine. Um, and the slugs, so they die happy. You know, <laughs> the thing is, I would send the kids out to collect them. At this, I had a huge garden. This was at another house. And I believe they're a little traumatized by the whole experience. Your it was kids? Right, yeah, very stinky, uh, dead beer slugs. However, they didn't put them off beer. I, I'll say that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, put them off slugs. Anything of squirrels. Well, that's a whole show. That's a whole show. Squirrels are a whole show. About Just thought I'd throw that out Just there. Just because squirrels. even though a squirrel is technically not a bug. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, they, that's right. It's bugs. <laughs> <laughs> but they are. Don't fence they, me in, man. I'm, that's right. I'm like they being are, creative. We, they, they, are, they have <laughs> bug tendencies. They do have bug tendencies, darn it. I had one in my house once. A squirrel in your house? He ate his way in. Through the screen, because I had peaches up on the sill. Uh And then when I came home and saw the mess he'd made, he ate his way out through the other window. Because it would just be too easy for him to go out the same hole that he came in. Absolutely. You know what kept him out? You know what I did to keep him out? My neighbor gave me a big cutout of Elvis. So I put Elvis in the window on my porch. So now when the the squirrels come on the porch, Elvis is staring down at him. (laughs) It worked. <laughs> uh, what else do you do to get rid of, of, of a lot of bugs in your yard besides using a, um, the, your sprayer, the sprayer end of your hose mm-hmm. or your hands? That's, that's kind of it, I think. There's, you know, there are some uh, organic bug sprays that you can get. I use neem oil. You have to be careful with it, though. Yeah, do you? I've never used it, Yeah, it's the oil from a tree from India and South Asia. Yeah. And um, it can work as a way to keep bugs off, or it can also help as a fungicide, too. Uh, 
Oh. Don't go crazy on it though. Don't uh-huh. you don't want to get your whole plant sopping wet. Okay. I've made that mistake before. Thinking like, okay, this is organic. Spray, 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 spray. Yeah. Little, little, you know, little is good. A whole lot's got to be even better. Right. You got to be gentle with it. Just give it a couple sprays and just spot the leaves that you have the trouble with. Good. Yes. Okay. I remember something else that I do. I crush up eggshells and I put it around a plant and that will keep slugs away because it's sharp and they don't like it. You know how smushy. Oh, that's are. clever. Yeah. So. You, I think you get more slugs than I do. Well, yeah, probably. I mean, not this year, but that one year, I'm, I'm still recalling it very clearly. And I get those harlequin bugs that you were mentioning. Oh, there's something. I get they a lot of those. Something. Yeah. They're right into the soapy bucket, those guys. Yeah. Ah, summertime. The living is easy. The birds are chirping, the bees are humming, the insects are buzzing. Oh, no. What are you looking at? Get out of my garden. Who? Me? Yes, you, you awful bushy-tailed rat. (laughs) I'm not a rat, though, am I? I'm a rodent. Oh, looky here. A nice red tomato. Get away from that. I grew that from seed. I'm just going to take a bite. And then I'll throw it on your garden floor. No! Get out! They find the bubonic plague on a squirrel in Jefferson County. Well, that's a laugh, isn't it? Like you humans don't have your very own plague. I'm coming over there right now. Oh, wait. What's this? Under my arm? Uh, Oh, a little lump. (coughs) Is it a bubo? Oh, (coughs) I'm feeling a bit feverish as well. Oh. Okay, I'm keeping my distance, but you get out. This is delicious. Best part of tomato I've ever had. I'm full. What's this over here? A cantaloupe? They're my favorite. So kind of you. You shouldn't have. You asked for it. (gasps) Where are you? Where did you go? Up here, in my tree. Hello. I see you've made quite a mess of your beans. And your eggplant, <laughs> your aubergine, it's destroyed. <laughs> They're fragile, though, aren't they? They can't withstand your throwing pots and pans and whatnot at oh, them. Oh, no. I've got to get a grip. Finding your garden not the peaceful and serene oasis you thought it would be? Maybe it's time for a nice cup of gardeners. Get a grip tea. Made with the finest dried lemon balm, Chamomile flowers, holy basil, dandelion root, lavender buds, whiskey berries, rum raisins, and bourbon grains. We'll have you feeling better in no time. In fact, drink enough and you'll be feeling nothing at all. Avacapa. <laughs> You're gonna need it. It's time for mailbag. Ring, ring. Mailbag. Yay. This letter is from Bob in New York City who has a challenge with his houseplant. I have a scrawny little Dracaena. First, it's a cutting. Though about 18 inches tall, it's spindly. One stem, no branches, it's leaves falling off. Some are green and healthy looking when they drop. Some yellow somewhat before falling. I water it infrequently. I have checked for root rot. The soil is old, but I can't say how old five years is a likely good estimate. I've never had this much trouble with a house plant. All of the skinny little thing's ancestors were monsters, one as tall as me. I air layered and pruned that one and got half a dozen beauties. Of these six cuttings, this is the only survivor. I can deal with losing it. I've had its family in my life since 1982. It has, after all, lived longer than its gifter. I need to have my thumbs regreened. They sound, oh, they sound pretty green, though, to have a plant since 1982. I, I, you know, when you have a plant that, that that's oh. that old, you want to do everything you can to keep it alive, don't you, you? You do, but I don't know. I don't know. What can he do? Is it just the plant's time? or? Well, you know, sometimes that's true. It's an old plant, and plants, house plants, they don't live forever. I have spider plants that belong to my mother, that are over 30 years old, and I just you know keep re-putting little babies uh-huh. up inside it. But I, you know, I don't know how long 
um, a dracaena will live. You know, a uh, dracaena means female dragon. Oh, does it? Not That's a great beautiful. name. They're yes. beautiful plants. Um, Taller than him. Yeah, 1982. Wow. You know, he says he waters infrequently. Um, and 14 days seems pretty good. They don't like a lot of water. Yeah. And my gut for this plant is uh, when in doubt, let it drought. Oh, that's a good saying. That's what I'm thinking is that, you know, the worst thing you can do to a house plant is overwater it. Okay. If you get root rot in it. Uh, I've killed a lot of plants that way. I mean, that's how I've killed all my orchids. Oh, um, I killed almost all of mine too. And every succulent I, I've ever had is is dead. They're gone. No, it's, it's tricky. And I also wonder too, if he's feeding it, you know, house plants need to be fed. Oh. I also think it's also good to water weekly. Weekly. That's how I like to water my You plants. mean rather than once every two weeks, you would water less weekly? Or you're not talking about this plant. You're talking about in general. In general, in general. I water weekly, weekly. Oh, weekly, weekly. You water weekly every week. Yes. That's what you mean, right? <laughs> weekly, it's weekly. Very good. Weekly, weekly. Mm-hmm. Weekly, weekly. Um, but for, yeah, but for a Dracaena, you... Two weeks sounds pretty good. Um, he may want to also check the soil because you can, if it's if it needs to be fed, if it goes through the soil, the soil is five years old. Yeah. Um, repot it, but I'd keep it in the same size pot. I wouldn't give it a bigger pot. Yeah, that that's that's true. That uh, that I do know about. Yeah. Well, it, it's hard to lose a, it's hard to lose a plant though that you've had. I mean, it's like it's part of his family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I have um, what do you call a weeping fig? Um, what do you call those? It's up uh, in my living room, Edith. Oh, I don't know. Ficus. Thank you. Ficus. Okay, you're welcome. I've had one for 20 years. Wow. And they don't live very long either. Well, I also have plants my mom gave me. Oh, do you? Oh, I do. I do, and I take a special care of them. And, you know, I think she liked plants that were easy to take care of. So that's why they've not died. Because <laughs> they're sure. easy. Yeah. 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 Well, we have another letter. This letter is from Doug from Tennessee. For a while, I lived on a mountainside with state game land above us. One year was particularly dry, and there was very little browse in the forest. We were trying to grow a vegetable garden that year and found that the deer would eat anything that got over an inch tall. We replanted and replanted and tried all the possible deer discourager techniques we'd heard of. Rubber snakes, hanging pie tins, (laughs) soap, human hair predator urine, deer blood, available commercially it seems, etc. Oddly enough, everything seemed to work for about a week. Then the the deer got used to it and were still hungry. After a few months, we were at our wits end. I asked my dad what we could do to keep the deer out of the garden. He said, a 30-30 should do the trick. (laughs) That's a gun for our city dwellers. We just decided that we weren't doing a garden that year but a deer feeding station and quit trying. Oh, that's right. Live and let live. There you go. The philosophy of a gardener. Okay, here you go, deer. (laughs) Yes. And you know what can also work? (laughs) What? I've heard this is that there's a, there's, you can get this at Gardener Supply Company and we get no kickback from that at all, but I love this company a lot. I get a lot of my tomato cages from them that has a, a timer that you can put on your water hose. So that if the deer goes through this laser, it'll spray them with water. Oh, oh, that's and very just train high the tech. deer to get oh. out of your. Wow, that sounds out like. Of do your you know yard. anyone that's used that? No, I haven't. But I, I don't. You know, we don't get deer in our neighborhood. But when no. I lived in Minnesota, I would get deer. I had the most beautiful hostas alongside this little creek, and the hostas would shoot up these spikes uh-huh. of beautiful little purple flowers that are about three feet tall. And as soon as they would bloom, the deer would come by and just pick off each wow. little oh. flower. Well, I know we have some listeners in Virginia, and I know they have deer. So maybe someone will let us know. Maybe if if, if that works, that high-tech thing yeah. you said. Find a way to mm-hmm. live and let live. Yeah, that and you know, great. And I know people, too, that for vegetable guards, I'll put them, actually, you can get those cages. You mean put, not the deer in a cage. You put the... <laughs> Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was unclear. That's right. Just cage, just trap them. Trap the big deer. And and don't let them out until, and you then, know, wintertime. That's right. Yeah. I think getting these letters is one of my favorite aspects of this podcast. I love it too, Christy. I love hearing from people. I love uh, folks sharing about their gardens with I us. I love creating a community 
with people mm-hmm. maybe thousands, oh my goodness, thousands and thousands of miles away with those other countries. I hope our Latvia listeners tell us about their garden. I hope so too. Well, you know, all you need to do is send us your favorite gardening mistakes, uh, your experiences with bugs, invasive plants, uh, tips on watering and your mulching. successes. If you've had successes at something that maybe we've had a problem with, oh, that please you could help share, us. Please do help. Just write to us at upside down tulips at gmail.com or you can go to our website at upside down tulips.com. And now it's time for your gardening inspiration of the week. This quote is from Margaret Atwood, famous author. She says, In the spring, at the end of the day, you should smell like dirt. Thanks everybody for listening today. And please subscribe to Upside Down Tulips. When you subscribe to a podcast, you no longer have to keep track of all your favorite shows. You don't have to go out there and search out new episodes all the time. You don't have to remember what you've listened to or where you've left off. Yeah, our new episodes will come directly to your phone, like automatically. Every time you open the app, we will be there waiting. In fact, we are waiting right now. So you're all set to listen entirely offline. Tell your friends, please. Special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song and to our friend and fellow gardener, Karen Slack. And don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Upside Down Tulips um, I have some wine in the fridge. Oh, that sounds good. All right. Let's go in the backyard. Okay. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>